So I'm just going to cut these slabs kind of, you just got to go by feel when you're kind of going with a live edge slab because you don't have any straight edges to measure off of or use a square with. So in this case, I've got this little kind of crotch going on here and then this crack is getting pretty big and gnarly over here as well as I've got a little bit of a straight section from the saw, the log being cut on this one side where the live edge kind of kind of tapers off and stops right about here. So I want to cut as much of that off as I can and kind of create a functional end to the table so that, you know, when, if some, somebody's sitting here, you know, they don't have this piece stabbing them in the gut while they're trying to eat, right? Or maybe two people could sit at this end because we've kind of got this little natural nook. I don't know. But I'm going to take this back a little bit so I can remove this sawed edge because that's the sawed, sawn, man, I'm a hick. Whatever, deal with it. And that way I'll lose kind of some of this gaping crack here. And then I'm gonna buck this, kind of take off this sharp point here and kind of create a line that's kind of more perpendicular with the growth of this branch, you know? So I'll kind of just square that off across there. And then I'm gonna take a little bit off that end just to neaten up that edge. So just kind of go with it. Just let the force guide you. There's a little kind of knobby bit sticking out here. I want to take that off as well as this little crack. The widest part of the crack is at the end here, so just remove a few blemishes, but I'm going to leave that kind of neat little burly bump there. I don't want to lose too much length on the table either. Right. That looks like a nice table. Pretty, pretty nice. doing here is I'm getting ready to put a couple Dutchmen in or bow tie splines or butterfly splines or I don't know everybody's got a different name for these things I probably got three or four names myself so I'm going to be throwing in a couple of these bad boys but before I trace them on here and hog out where they're gonna go what I do is I rough them out on a bandsaw I just freehand draw these. I don't use any specific angles. I want them to be kind of asymmetrical and just natural looking. And I put a little bit of an angle on the end so they're not just square looking. They actually look like a bow tie, you know, a little bit of asymmetry there. Looks better to the eye, in my opinion. But before I put them in here, I'm just going to slightly taper I've already done this one. I'm going to slightly taper these edges. So I rough them out on the bandsaw and then I just pare down a little so that they've got a slight wedge shape, you know, just a 32nd or so on each side. And that way, when I do trace them out, I'm tracing out the small end of this. And then I can shave away, I can pare away my pencil line, or at least half of my pencil line. And that way I know as I tap this down in there, it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter and really wedge itself in there. That way I don't have to worry about, oh, if I cut the line off a little bit too much and I put it in there and it's loose, right? Because it's tapered, it's just going to get tighter and tighter as it goes down. And so far I've had perfect bow tie splines every time using this method, so I recommend you use it because it's de bomb diggity. Yep, I just said bomb diggity. Not ashamed. Once I've got them where I want, I just, I put them on the piece and then I kind of go like this and like that 
Then I'll flip it around and I basically just wiggle them around for about three or four minutes. And then once my eyeballs say, yeah, yeah, that's where you want them. Then I just trace them on. For those of you who are new to this whole uh, Dutchman bow tie spline thing, these are supposed to prevent these cracks from getting any bigger. Now, I've kind of got my, I'm a bit skeptical as to whether or not putting this in here could prevent this crack from widening. If it wanted to widen, I'm pretty sure it's going to widen. But ultimately, you shouldn't be using slabs that aren't dry because when you put that in the side your house, if you put a green slab in there, it's going to crack and pull apart. And I think the Dutchman's might help a little bit, but if the wood's going to crack, it's going to crack from my experience. So these, this, this slab is stable now. It's dry. It's at about 13%. So it's going to shrink a little bit more, but we're not going to get any big twists or these cracks growing anymore. So these are kind of more just for looks with a little bit of function, in my opinion. So, you know, you don't want to put the Dutchman right near the end because you only have a tiny little chunk of wood, you know, that's of the grain that would be preventing this crack from opening and it would just be this little section right there. And if that was spreading apart, it would just crack that off. So you want to be in probably, I don't know, two or three inches from the end as far as placement for strength. And then I just added another one in here. I kind of add Dutchman's just based on the proportion of cracks. Now, if there's a big crack, like at the other end, I'll use a bit bigger of a Dutchman. If there's a really long crack, I'll use a couple different size ones. I like to taper them. I don't like to use all the same size piece. If it's a big crack, I use this size, smaller crack, smaller piece. And if I'm doing a number of them in a row, I'll try and actually taper them all down or taper them down to the middle and then widen them back out just to create a little bit of visual interest so it's not just same size all the way along. You know, got to add a little artistic value, you know. That's, that's just kind of how my brain works when it comes to these sort of things or everything. And we trace it on. And then I'm just going to freehand this out with the router and then finish it off with a chisel. You can see at this end, this is probably the biggest one I've made just because this gap is pretty massive. And I, I would shorten these, but the crack is kind of drifting that way. And if I shorten it, it's really not going to be doing anything. The bottom of the of the Dutchman will be in the crack kind of a thing. So I got to lengthen it a little bit to get over into the, the meat of the wood there. So I'll put that's the biggest one. And I might even shrink this one down a little bit, and cut the ends off. It doesn't need to be quite that big. It's just so that this guy has a buddy to hang out with, you know. So we'll put him over there. Kind of leave this crack. It's gonna, I'm going to fill this with resin. I don't want to be like half on that. Yeah, yeah. Just give it a little room to breathe. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Check it out. Got my hole all cleaned out here. It's fit about halfway down, and then it starts to get real snug. That's about where I want it. 
So I'm just going to put some glue in the bottom, just a tiny little bit, just enough to spread out and, and hold the wedge in place once it bottoms out. But I don't want enough that it's like pooling in the bottom and preventing the wedge from going down all the way, right? I don't really personally care about glue on the sides because if the wedge is tight going in, that glue is just going to get pushed down to the bottom anyways. And even if the glue does stay in there, unless you got a void, like it's end grain to, to end grain most of the surfaces, so it's not really going to do much for strength having glue on the sides of your bow ties. The wood's just going to absorb that glue, that joint would never hold together anyway, so I just put glue in the bottom. And then because this crack is so big, I'm just going to put a few wedges right in here just to prevent this little, because the crack's kind of on an angle, so that knife edge might want to bend down a bit, you know? So I just want to support that so it stays flush. So yeah, it is. proud obviously and I'm just going to plane that and sand it down flush. Samurai standards. going. What the heck? I don't see any dress. There's probably some giant <laughs> cavern inside there. Well, clearly the green tape is not the tape to use. That, that Matt Cremona, he's full of shit. Tell you that. Just kidding. I love you, Matt. Um, I guess I should have just used more tape or a different tape to try and seal to this kind of rougher grain here. Because the green tape ain't holding it in. It's just all my epoxy's pouring out the bottom. So I probably spent about 10 bucks, 15 bucks on that little test there. But ultimately the test was to, um, to see if I could sand off this epoxy soaking into the grain after and then refinish it with a different finish. So we'll just let that dry. 
<laughs> I did a little test over here with sprayed some lacquer on first and then epoxied over that to see if uh, it doesn't soak into the grain as much. We'll have to just uh, wait and see. And do some sanding tests once that's set up. Uh, we're, uh, yeah, steep learning curve here. Learning all sorts of new stuff. All right, guys, so that's as far as I have gotten for today. Obviously, I learned a lot about how to uh, apply and not apply epoxy on our little test over there, but everything kind of, we, we got the information that we needed to, so in the next step, I'm going to be actually applying the epoxy to the finished tabletop so that we can get that all done, sand it up, and clear coat it, and then on to the steel bases. So stay tuned for that, you guys. I hope you learned some stuff with the whole bow tie splines and everything. They're really not that complicated. Take a little bit of time, and they add a lot aesthetically to your project. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends so that we can make woodworking cool again. And if you're not subscribed, well, Freaking subscribe already, okay? I'm teaching you stuff. You're learning how to build tables, frick. What more do you want from me? Anyways, I think that's I think that's enough enough for now. Uh, until the next video, Samurai out.